Hello. Hi. Good afternoon and thank you for joining our live today. Um, okay, so today we're going to be talking about cars and visas. For people who are looking to study in the UK, we're going to be giving you information about um, your CAS and visa. Now, if we're talking about CAS and visa, you know we have to also talk about how the admission process also takes place. So I'm just going to be waiting a bit for more people to join and introducing myself as well, obviously. So, hi, my name is Rosalyn. Um, if you have been here on our lives uh, before, you probably have met me a couple of times before. And today, I'm gracing the screen again to see your lovely faces so thank you for joining um i'll just wait a bit for us to maybe get to like 10 or more people before i can start giving information so i do not you know have to repeat myself all over and over again and if you have questions please please note them down once we are done with the information we need to give to you then you can you know ask your questions um so i'm gonna apologize for not being able to do this on wednesday and um, we had uh, some issues beyond our control and so we could not hold this live but if you're here and you're interested in going to the uk um and you're thinking about going this september or in january then the information i'm going to be providing here today is definitely something you do not want to miss because this will enable you, you know, plan appropriately and then know what to expect, right? So you need to know how the process works so that it's as smooth for you as possible. And then so that when someone is talking about it, you're not, you don't think that they're talking about something that's so technical when it's not supposed to be like that. So here we give you all the juicy details. So um thank you for joining like i said i'm just gonna wait a bit okay also my colleague is going to be coming to also talk about certain things um i'm going to be giving information about cas i don't know if you know what cas means question of acceptance of studies this is when you have applied to a school they've given you an admission you have um, accepted the admission and then they're giving you a document which confirms that you've accepted and you can use in applying for your visa Right, so that's this document I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to be talking about the process you have to go through before you can get this document. Then my colleague Focusing, she's going to be joining me with our other page, which is Nexi Travels, where she's going to be talking about the visa. So that's the most important part, obviously. So the whole admission and everything, obviously, is getting you to the point where you have to apply for your visa. So she's going to be giving you the information that you will need, you know, to apply for your visa. So yeah. We just hit 10 people like i said i'm going to be starting when we hit 10 people so um what do you need for admission if you're thinking of studying in the uk what are you going to need for admission first thing you need to talk you need to think about why do i want to study in the uk is it the opportunities that present themselves and the other countries available that can actually give me the opportunities that I'm looking at or looking for. Now, the major reason why people want to study in the UK are because it's possible to go with your families. It's easier compared to other countries. So if you're thinking to study in Canada or in the US or in Australia, the processes are quite rigorous compared to the UK. Also, you get the opportunity to pay in installments. So you do not have to pay your whole school fees before you get to travel to the UK to study. Also, the visa process is quick. If you are applying for your visa, it can take anywhere from one to two days to one week to 15 days if you don't have any problems. So if, if, if you are paying for a super priority, in one to two days, your visa is out. You cannot do that with Canada, Australia, and the US, you have to actually get it to be able to, you know, um, and go for your interview. So those things make people want to study in the UK. And for countries such as Ireland, which is also an English speaking country, um the visa process also takes like two months right and they are more thorough in the kind of documentation you need to provide before you can actually get um your visa as well as you need to pay your full tuition so when people hear that and also you cannot go with your dependents so this is really great for people who are single who have their full money to pay for tuition because ireland is also a very great country 
right so i'm gonna so if you're going to the uk why because of funds because you have family and friends there because you have dependents you want to go with bef because you're thinking of staying back because right now there are lots and lots of options to stay back both in tech both in health in education you know in a lot of areas right now so if you're thinking about that then this is for you so what do you need when you want to apply the things you need for a school all schools generally you need your um certificates certificate not statement of results you need your certificates right you need your transcript not um student copy you need your official transcript um you also need um your cv to show what you've been doing between when you graduated and now you need your work now depending on what you got in your english your work purpose is to prove your english language abilities now most schools will accept a WIAC with C6. Some schools will not accept a WIAC with C6. They will accept a WIAC with um, um, C5 and above. While for some courses it might have to be C4 and above. So if your WIAC is maybe like C6, um, your English rather in your WIAC is like C6, uh, you might be limited to the kind of schools you want to go for, right? Um, so the other alternative there is to actually write an English test. So depending on the school, it might be um, an IELTS, it might be their own internally administered English test. It can also be Duolingo for schools. There are very limited schools that accept Duolingo anyways. So it's usually either IELTS or the school has their own English test. So that's the purpose of your wife. So if your wife's English is low or it has been quite a while, then you might actually have to write an English test. So I mentioned four documents. So we have your certificate, your um, transcript, your CV, your YF for your English um, language um, evidence. You also have your work reference. So when you've been working or anywhere you've worked in the past, they need to give you a reference. You also need to have your um, academic reference. Um, so your lecturer or somebody can give you a reference. You also have your international passport. So usually they would, um, in most schools would require a, um, a passport that has at least six months validity beyond the course that date. So let's say if you are thinking of going to school in September, um, if the course that date is September, so six months beyond September. So six months from September is I think March next year. So your 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 um, um, passport shouldn't expire before March next year for most schools. But some schools will still work with um, a passport that is about to expire because they know you have to apply for another one before you apply for your visa, right? So in that case, they might give you an admission, but they will expect that you give them an updated, um, 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 what is it, an updated uh, passport, right? Now, the final document you need is your statement of purpose. This is where a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, I need to, um, I need help or I can't write or stuff like that. So basically your statement of purpose is why do you want to study this course? Why this university? Why the UK? What do you want to do beyond studying this course? So basically telling the school why you think that at this point in time, this course in this school is going to get me to the next level. So that's basically the eight documents you need for your admission. Then once you have these documents ready and you've decided on the school you want to go for and the course you want to go for, you're making an application. And once you get an admission offer, there are two things, two things you have to do. You either have to accept the offer or you decline the offer. Okay, so I've seen some questions. Please, once I'm done, I will scroll back up and attempt and, and, and um, answer to all the questions, please, um, so that we don't get mixed up. We don't get things mixed up. So you either need to accept the offer or decline the offer. Now this is important because most times, um, most a lot of students apply to more than one school. So if you're getting two offers, definitely you cannot accept two offers, right? So you need to accept one and decline one. So once you've accepted one, it means you have told the school, I want to come to your school. Now this is where you now start working towards getting your CAS, which is your confirmation of acceptance of study. So as you've accepted the, the course, or have you accepted the admission offer then there are certain steps you may need to take depending on the school so some schools require you to what send your bank statement to verify that you have the amount of money that you claim to have make um, deposits 
the minimum deposition deposit that they have actually um, stipulated in the admission offer. So it might be one thousand pounds, it might be two thousand pounds, it might be three thousand pounds, it might be four thousand pounds, depending on the school. So you have to make your tuition deposit. Then some schools with your tuition deposit and your bank statement, they just go ahead and give you your acceptance of confirmation. I mean confirmation of acceptance. For some schools, they'll actually give you a questionnaire or they would give you um they would have an interview with you so in this case if they have an interview with you and you do not pass their interview they will not give you a confirmation of acceptance so that means that offer has gone right um if they give you um, um a questionnaire to fill and there are certain informations you fill the um in your questionnaire they might actually also reject you so some things that they look at for rejection really are previous refusals if you had previous refusals to other countries or even to the uk you know they might think that if the previous refusals are very close say you had um maybe six months or less than a year before um applying again they might not want to go through that visa issue because they feel like if they give you the admission and you go on for the application, there's a chance that they won't give you the visa. So they don't like working with students that have very slim chances of actually getting their visa to come to school because the process is just messy, having to return the money and all that. So in that case, they might reject you, you um, your admission. Also, if it also has to do with an interview, if you do not pass in terms of your motivation for wanting to go for the course, you know, what you want to do afterwards, what you've been doing before the course, things like that. If you cannot defend why you want to go there, then they might also reject you. But in most cases, people pass these interviews. It's not as, you know, difficult as I'm making it sound. I'm just telling you that some people actually get rejected. So once you go ahead and get past mm -hmm. these stages, you then get your confirmation of acceptance. And this is the document that can help you to apply for your visa without this document even if you've been offered admission to 15 schools and you have paid all their tuition deposits you, you cannot apply for visa right you can't apply for visa without this so once you have this document that's when you can apply for visa so i'm going to be talking about the information um um information are included in this document i have it jotted down in case you see me looking down um which is what you're looking at for in to apply for your visa now so what do you have in this document you have your card number the number that you're using confirming you you have your sponsor license so your school the institution is actually the one sponsoring your visa they have a license to be able to sponsor people to come to the uk so you have the school sponsor license then you have your course start and end date so this is very important when it comes to um, the dates that they're going to give you on your visa for when you can arrive in the UK, right? So they need to know the cost of that date. They also need this, um, this cost start and end date so that you, they can calculate the amount of money you're going to pay for your IHS. Your IHS is your international, international health surcharge. I don't know if you're aware, but you need to pay for your health insurance before you go to the UK. Now, your cost start and end date will determine the length of time you're going to be studying in the UK. And this is how your um, IHS fee is calculated. So for a one-year course, an average is about 980 to $990. Um, $990. For a two-year course, it's an average of $1,600. For an 18 months course, it's an average of $1,300. So when you put the start and end date, it calculates how much you're going to get um, to pay for your IHS fee. Then it also has your passport details. This is very important. This is why some schools insist that your passport has to be valid beyond your um, um, resumption, beyond this cost start date, because they need to, it needs to align. The passport just waiting for your visa needs to align with the information that is um, provided on the CAS. So your names have to appear as they appear on the on your passport, your year of birth, your date of birth rather, your um which other information you have, your um the number, the passport number also have to align, your sex have to align, the um, validity. So when when it was um when how long your passport is valid. Everything has a line. So if you're going to a school who has admitted you with a passport that was soon to be expired, it will be advisable that you contact them 
and then update your passport details with your new passport once you get them so that they can update this record because you cannot use your new passport with a cast that is um, having information of your old passport. It will not fly. It's an automatic visa rejection, right? So another important thing that I hold is the, um, the cost tuition. So how much you're paying in total for the cost for one year and then how much you have paid. So if, for instance, the cost is £10,000 and you pay £1,000, it will state it there. This is very important because this is what the visa officer is going to use to calculate your proof of funds. How do you calculate your proof of funds? If you follow us, you know that I have actually given the formula to calculate your proof of funds before. So, um, so if you're calculating your proof of funds, it's your balance of your tuition and your upkeep or maintenance fee. So if your school fees is 10,000 and you've paid 2,000, it means 8,000 pounds plus maintenance fee. So if you're going to a, a school outside of London, it's 9,207 pounds. If you're going to a school inside of London, it's 12,006 pounds, right? So let's use outside London. So 8,000 pounds plus 9,207 pounds. That's what you calculate as a proof of funds. That's what should be inside your account. Do you get so and your course has to confirm that you have made this payment so if for instance your 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 cost fee is ten thousand pounds and you've paid five thousand pounds your your cast will confirm this and that is what you will use in calculating your proof of funds so whatever amount your cast says you have paid out of your tuition is the balance of it plus your maintenance cost that you are going to be putting you know as your proof of funds if your cast says you have paid all your tuition then it means that is the document that is proving that you do not owe tuition fee. All you need to show in your bank account is your maintenance fee. Please. You know, so that's why your cash is very important. It's like the most important document when you're applying for your visa. Then another thing that you need to look out for is your English language test. So the cast is going to confirm what they used for English language. Do you get? So if it's YEC, they'll state it there. If it's YEC and your BSc, they'll state it there. If it's IELTS, they'll state it there. If it's the school internal exam, they'll state it there. And any documents they state there, you will need to submit. You know, so they'll state all the documents they've evaluated for your degree and also what they considered for your in to, to prove that you have the ability to, to read and write in English and speak in English um, rather. So, um, Whatever it is the class has mentioned, if it mentions your IELTS, you must put your results. If it mentions your YEC and your BSc and PhD, no, no, sorry, PGD, you know, you must put them there. Whatever it is your class is mentioning, all those documents must be um, submitted. So basically, that is um, all the information that the class provides and that is what you're going to be needing for your visa. Now, when it gets to the visa part, um, I want my colleague to come and talk about the documents you need uh, in addition to your cast to apply for your visa, what's the best time to apply for your visa and all that. I want her to actually request to join me so that she can actually join this live. So while I'm waiting for her to request, um, I'm going to be giving you advice on what to do for you to get your cast on time. Because I'm going to tell you probably some stories of other people that have had issues with the CAS, not coming on time and not being able to apply for visa or missing the deadline for CAS. So what happens is that when you get your admission and you apply, there are certain things, like I said earlier, you need to do before you get your CAS. Usually the school will have a deadline for when you should submit all these things for CAS. The minutes you miss this deadline, such as submitting your bank statement or having a date for interview, that's it you have to defer for another session so what does that mean it's what it means is that you need to be aware of this date so if the school requires you to submit a 28 day bank statement you need to start you need to have that money in your account right to start counting and needs to be complete 28 days you know for you to submit to the school so if you started counting your money you know late and your 28 days is beyond when they have closed the um the application for cars that you have missed out on that offer do you get also if you don't cannot get a date for interview if it's a school that does interview if you cannot get a date for interview before they close up the dates um for interviews then automatically you have missed out that admission you need to defer your offer 
another thing uh, what i'm going to advise is for people who are thinking of going to the uk the people these things usually affect are people who do rush hour you see that right now you have a lot of time to apply and get your admission you know do everything you have even apply for your visa up to six months before your course start dates you get you have time to do everything and everything can be done on time you see the people that actually get to the point where they cannot get their cars are people who come at the rush hour you want to study in september and you're applying when in july it takes a month or two for your admission to come out some people's offer is coming out even in that september that they're going for the school your class is coming out as at the time your you know um your um your course has already started you might actually have issues with visa or your class deadline has even passed so if you're thinking of studying in the uk this september it is best you start your application process on time and have enough time for this so some people would have had the offer but do not have enough time to count their 28 days bank statements do you get some people might have had the offer but because as at the time they're applying there are so many people also waiting for interviews the school will give a deadline and if you cannot get a date for interview before deadline it's just automatic and if you don't have your class you're not going to the uk at least not this session till september till january and if the school you apply to doesn't have january that's till the next september or you apply to another school and start the process you know all over again and mind you by the time you're trying to apply for your class most times you should have already paid your um, um down payment that's your tuition deposit so you have to start applying to get your money back while you're applying for another school so it's just a messy process for a lot of people who do not start this process in time who do not have the information so that's why it's very important to have your cast um i still haven't you know um seen the request from my colleague so i'll probably just take the visa part while she's i don't know why she hasn't joined right but while she's still waiting to join i'll be taking it. if she joins while i'm in the middle of this then i will just um hand hand it over to her to continue and once this is done i can now attend to your questions i can see a lot of questions so please just um, stay calm or drop them i will still you know go through and answer them one by one so what you now need for your visa so once you have your card which is the most important document for your visa you need um your transcript which, which, which obviously you need your transcript right you need like i said the documents that your cast has um as stated which is your bsc your wayek um if you ha are married your marriage certificate if you have kids the certificate for your children the certificate for your children okay all right so apparently she has sent the request so let me go let me scroll to see if the request is there the request is there the request 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 to join I still can't see the request. Okay, so I'll just I'm just gonna continue. Maybe she'll send another request. Okay, so um you need your like I said, your cast document, your admission letter, if you have it. Most most times we advise you just add it, but your cast covers for that. Your degree certificate, your transcript, your WAEG or IELTS, whatever it is you use for your English. If you're married, your marriage certificate, then your financial documents, right? Your financial documents to prove that you have the money to study in the uk and any other supporting document so if you add sorry your tuberculosis is very important so that's a very important document that you also need to have now um if you now have other supporting documents such as um a letter of explanation maybe you've had previous refusals or you've had um, a ban a ban that had just elapsed you know stuff like that you cannot add them you know there's selling other documents that some people have to add um recently we've seen an increase in the visa officers and requests for yeah, employment records so some people fly they don't put employment records and the goals they give them their visa while other people will get a request you know to resubmit all your employment records letters employment letters or reference letters from these organizations to show where you have worked between when you finished studying and now that you're applying for the visa so those are also records that you might need to show for the visa application right so i'm going to now be talking about certain things that you need to do to prepare for your visa application because like i said some people prepare for class especially if your university does not need your bank statement and they don't prepare for visa now for the visa preparation you need 
to have had your um your fees or your proof of funds for the period of minimum of 28 days so if you've gotten your cars and the um period where you need to apply i'm um, sorry the period where you need to resume you know in school is drawing near you still cannot apply for your visa because your bank statements you're still counting it is still running you still need to show your proof of funds for the a period of 28 days right so you will not be able to apply so this is why you need to calculate on t and you need to calculate well and why we advise always work with an agency such as ours because we help you to plan well so that you're not wasting time now what's the disadvantage of wasting time one if during this period your course has started and you want to just apply for visa the rush is not here i don't know if any of you had friends who just went in january or september it wasn't easy to get a date for bio submission of biometrics people slept at the biometric center people slept some people did two days three days with your money you're begging for a chance to go and submit your visa application do you get so first of all you have a whole lot of rush secondly if your cost start date has, has started right usually you only have to pay a deposit but most schools will, will require that you get you pay up to 50 percent on enrollment so how the uk school works is when you get your offer you pay a down payment so it might be one thousand might be two thousand might be three thousand depending on the school now on enrollment as at the time you're coming to school you're enrolling for the course you need to make it up to 50 percent if you're still in nigeria as that when enrollment is going on usually it's online so you can actually do it from nigeria if you're still in nigeria you need to make that payment in nigeria so imagine all your money is is in the bank for proof of funds and all that you need to now take it out or take out some of that money which might reduce your proof of funds so that you can make payment to the school that period or you have to start running around meanwhile some of your mates are already in the uk a month prior working and already making money in pounds you are still here trying to make up 50 percent before you go this is why we advise people always start on time i'm saying this from experience because we always see a rush during the period when these things are closing down and that's when we are having a lot of disappointed people who either cannot get offers or who at the end of the day cannot go because their car that doesn't come out on time or they can no longer apply for visa because you know the time has passed so this is basically why we advise you do that then another thing is for people who have um who have had previous refusals so if you've had previous refusals you've had previous um bans or your spouse so if you're married and your spouse has had previous refusals you know that okay you need to start making sure that you're gathering all the evidence you know to support your application depending on why you were re refused previously so for instance i know i i did a live on people that we saw the um home office requesting backdated bank statement from why did they request a bank statement because they or their spouse have either had a refusal based on insufficient funds for a visit visa in the past so the the home office wants to know that you really have that money available to you so if you're giving them a one month bank statement they can tell you that they need a three months bank statement so if you work with people like us we evaluate you and we let you know if you should have been running your account not one month before your visa application but three months or two months before your visa application because that's just the safest bet for you you get so we've had people who have had issues with um you know differences in their age maybe you've applied before and you were a certain age and all of a sudden you're this age or there's a difference in name there's a difference in a particular document you've submitted so there are certain things you need to put in place certain documents you need to go you probably need to go to some government office to go and you know get some documents to prove you know that certain things are real or certain things are not real do you get all these things need to be gotten on time it's not at the point of rush you will not be rushing out skelter and if you make an application the good thing about student visa is most times they don't reject outright most times they will give you a chance so they will send a um, request to you requesting further information so we've seen people and they give you 10 days so we've seen people running health as skelter looking for how to get these documents when you could have gotten it so for instance if you say that you have been working so you, you have owned your business 
right you've owned your business for quite a while and in your cv it shows that and you're applying for your visa and you're applying as you're um, self-employed and you put your cac documents you know that you're employed you put other documents then the home office or the officer goes online to check your cac document and sees that your um, company is is not operating you know you can actually check we've had people have refusals based on that they go online and see that your company is not which means you're going to be paying your tax so frsc has deemed that your company is no longer in operation meanwhile you say it is in operation and that's what you've been doing so you see that they are sending things that can just you know come come about with with you trying to navigate this system so this is why you have to start everything on time and if that is a case for you it's either you take out that you have been working for yourself or you go and get everything right with frsc and this will take time so imagine if it's already the period where your, your studies have begun is that the time you want to be paying backdated um um tax for maybe eight years or five years or two years or whatever since when your you have been owing tax and then you now have to wait for them to update it on the system before applying for your visa you know the whole process is just um messy all. so this is why we always advise this is why we give information so that you can make informed decisions you can ask relevant questions it's not just about i want to go i want to go a lot of people have gone done it themselves and they've gone they were just lucky why because they did not have anything that were incriminating but your case might not be the case as someone else in fact two people that have similar cases definitely will not be exactly similar because there, might, there will always be peculiarities that will make you different and one person might scale through you will not be the one to fall inside water Aside that, you guys are going to be evaluated by different people. So what one person will see and say, oh, I don't mind. I have already seen this before and to fly. Another person will see it. Another visa officer will see it and ask questions or deny based on those grounds. In fact, we've seen visa applications where for visits where two people will apply with the same bank statement, same document, same sponsor, same travel itinerary. Everything is the same. The two applications Go to different officers, probably one in South Africa, one in Sheffield. One comes out accepted, one comes out denied. Exact documents submitted. So these things are not things you want to joke with and you don't want to start building a history of rejection. Like I said, if you've had recent rejections, you cannot even apply to the UK immediately. You have to wait for at least one year before you cannot make another application. So I have come to the end of my talk. What's the time? We have 25 minutes for me to answer your questions so what i'm going to do is go back up scroll through to um, answer the questions that have already be, been asked while you can now put in your questions if you have questions so like i said we only have 25 minutes so i'm just going to go and um, start answering questions is there any fully funded scholarship university for masters and PhD in the uk well some schools have maybe up to 50 percent for certain courses especially in stem courses they have scholarships i am not aware of fully funded but you can get up to 50 percent uh you will definitely have to apply for this on your own because there are certain things you have to do like writing a statement of purpose making the application and different other things that you know someone cannot support you with except you do this by yourself right but we can guide definitely now for phd yes there are opportunities for fully funded phd but it's something also you have to actually work on on your own but basically mostly in stem courses because these are areas where the world is just going crazy over right now so what does stem means it means science technology engineering mathematics so the courses within this area are cost up areas where you can actually get funds but for other areas yes you can actually still get further scholarships so for instance if you apply to a school that's fifteen thousand pounds they give you a discount of say three thousand pounds as an international student you can also apply for further scholarships there might be other scholarships that require you to maybe write something apply or whatever and you can get further three thousand discount or two thousand or even five thousand discounts so yes it's very very possible to get to get scholarships but unfortunately we don't help with this we can give you the information we can guide you but you these are things you need to do on your own 
what of three years course IHS? There's no three years masters. There's not three except you're going for an undergraduate. Yeah, so you can, that's three years or four years depending on the course. But there's no three year masters now. So usually I don't I don't get to see the IHS fee for a three year masters. Um, do I pay to collect cash documents? Okay, so you pay your school fees. So if you're like I said with the example, the school fees, for example, if it's ten thousand pounds, the school might require that you make a deposit to show that you really want to go your intention. They might say, okay, make a deposit of two thousand pounds to show commitment. So you must pay that minimum deposit. So you can always pay higher. You can go ahead and pay your full tuition. Nobody's holding you, but the minimum you can pay is what will be stated on your on your offer letter. So if it's two thousand pounds, you need to pay it, and if the school needs to confirm before they now go ahead and issue you your cash. So yes, you don't actually pay for the cash; you're paying for your tuition. So at the end of the day, the cash is free because you're paying for your tuition. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, Priscilla, George. Thanks for joining. Can I use? My account for proof of funds. Yes, you can use your dad's account for proof of funds. So you can use parents' account, your account. If you're thinking of using a spouse, it needs to be a joint account, please. Because if you're using a spouse account and the spouse is sponsoring, there are a lot of documents you need to attach to it, and it's just messy. So it's better either have it in your account or in a joint account. That's the best. So yes, you can also use your parents' account. But what we also advise is if your parents are trust you that you will not run away with their money, they can pay this money into your account and then you just use your account so that you are sponsoring yourself. So that also flies. Good afternoon. You look so pretty. Well done. Oh, thank you, Mo. Please, how long does it take to get cash? So it depends on the school and it depends on how soon you meet the criteria. So like I said, some schools require you to do an interview. So if you do an interview and you pass interview, you might get it as quickly as the next day or it might take a week or two weeks while they are still deliberating or reviewing your interview. So if your interview was average, you know, it might still take a while for them to still deliberate if you should go or not. They might be considering other applicants as well as you and scoring you guys and seeing who can go and who can't. But if you were outstanding, like some of our students are actually very outstanding, the very next day, right, you will get your cast get so it all depends now if it's for a school that does just requires you to pay your tuition fee then your cast can come once they've confirmed your tuition fee give you another one to two weeks your cast will come other schools will require you to fill a questionnaire once they've gone through the questionnaire and they've seen all your answers and they're comfortable with your answers one to two weeks your cast will come now when it now comes to the time of rush like i said when it's getting to the point where school is going to resume these things take time so i cannot predict your cast can come as soon as two days and it can take up to a month sometimes because once they start getting overwhelmed with applications, it means the processing time gas starts stretching out a bit or starts stretching out a lot. So you see, even at this stage, you can get you an offer in two weeks in most schools. But when it's getting close, some uh, offer won't come out in two months because of the amount, the magnitude of applications that they have to work with. Like I said, from the beginning of this life, start your process now as long as you're thinking about it as long as you know you're definitely going to go especially for this september please start early so you're not part of people that are rushing so you can go to the uk one month before your course starts settle in get a job you know get all right and then once school starts you start not the, not the one that you're going to school when course has already started you're hectic in fact it's, the, the school is telling you if you don't arrive by this particular time we're, we're, we're deferring you automatically you get so you need to start on time will this ihs fee be refunded if you shall get yes your ihs fee will be refunded if your visa is denied so it will take six weeks from the time your visa has been denied but your visa application fee will not be refunded that is gone and gone for good but your ihs fee definitely to be refunded so it's refunded back to the card used in pain so if you use someone's card abroad or anywhere wherever it is you whoever's card you're using that person's card is the person that's going to receive the ihs do you still need your official school transcripts when you have already gotten an offer with your student copies transcript okay so if the school has actually given you an offer with your student copy i'm guessing it's because the um, transcript did not state student copy 
so they assumed it was um official right now you also need to check the kind of offer that you have there's there are two kinds of offers you can get a conditional offer and an unconditional offer so with your study sorry with your student copy transcript you can actually get a conditional offer so what they do is they've evaluated you they've seen that you actually qualify for the course they give you an offer but there's a condition to submit your um, official transcript so what they need is for the school to send it to them or if you work with us the, the agency to send it directly to them so it's an official copy right but if what you have used in getting admission does not state student copy and the school has accepted and given you an unconditional offer which means you do not have to meet any other further criteria then you're, fine. you're lucky right you're one of the few people that were they were able to scale through how much is ihs fees okay like i said previously ihs um it fluctuates so anywhere from for, for a one year cost around nine nine hundred and eighty to one thousand dollars right so 980 something 990 something 999 depending when you get to that page when you hit the page it will give you the final amount so i cannot tell you exactly because it's from trades but give or take minus 10 20 dollars 980 to um to one thousand dollars for a one-year course so if you're doing like a 15 month to an 18 month course it now goes from that to like 1000 to 1300 pounds right if you're doing a two-year course it's around 1600 and change so that's how the ihs fee goes so that's that for ihs and for ihs what you pay for ihs what your spouse is also going to pay so if you have your spouse pays that your children also pay the same sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a bit of discount for kids but most times everybody pays the same thing so if you're doing a two-year course and everybody's paying one thousand six hundred dollars and you have a wife and four kids everybody pays that same amount so you have to prepare for that for a placement cost that exceeds one year and visa duration will be given okay so for any for, for for your course that exceed one year your visa is basically just three months right sometimes even a month if your course has already started when you get to school you get your brp card your brp card is kind of like your temporal um um residency card so this is going to give you the validity so if you have a placement it's going to give you beyond the placement so if it's one year and placement is six months it's going to give you probably like a two year or even a, or more than two years um um validity to stay in the uk so yes it will definitely go beyond because it's still part of the course so if the course is course placement it's still part of the course you're still in school is the tuition fee refundable yes refundable if you um do not resume so if for instance you you defer before the school resumes before enrollment is refundable but if enrollment started and you enrolled thinking you were going to go because visa you know you're waiting for cars or whatever you've already enrolled and already started receiving lectures online right like a lot of people are doing right now like a lot of people whose courses have started since january they were still in this nigeria because their visa is not out they're still counting their banks and stuff like that if it's, that is you and you end up not getting the visa they would remove part of your money that you have actually used to start the course so you're not going to get a full refund but if you have actually um paid and you haven't started anything you will get a full refund but if you are denied at refund part they are going to refund all your tuition fees if you have not been enrolled in your course all your tuition fees please how long does it take to get cast i already asked this question it can take from two days to to a month depending on the school and depending on your situation i will be getting married by june this year and intend to travel with my wife for september start what do you advise i do at this point is getting admission for september start start late and no get your admission it doesn't matter admission does not affect whether you're married or not and if you're getting married in june you can always apply after june you can apply in august for your um july or august for your um, um your visa so it doesn't act, it doesn't affect at all all you just need to do is make sure you have a lot of pictures for your wedding pictures now before your marriage please have that because you're gonna um, include that in your application just to prove that you're really married but it does you can you can go for september you can even marry a day before your visa application as long as you have enough proof um, how much is phd for ihs 
IHS is not by the course. IHS is the, like a like a standard work for studies, a standard fee. So it, it's it's the amount of years. So if it's a PhD, it should be three years. It should be around two thousand something. I do not know the exact figure, but it should be two thousand something dollars, not pounds. In case of family applying and the primary applicant, okay. In case of family applying and the primary applicant pays for a priority visa and the dependent pays for standard visa fee, would the visa come out at least once based on the primary At once, no. Your primary applicant's visa is going to come out as at when he, um, the priority visa is supposed to come out. So if it's one week, it's one week. Your other family that paid for standard, their own is going to come out, you know, due at the standard time. So if it's going to take three weeks, it's going to take three weeks. So just because you paid for yourself does not cover your family you know if you paid priority or support price for yourself and your family is you know using standard then that's going to come out you know in the standard time yours is going to come out quicker and even for now your family cannot even pay for priorities just the main applicant that can pay for priority visa so even if you were thinking you wanted to everybody to be priority you can't it's only main applicants for now that can actually pay for priority processing please for a placement cost that's above 18 months Please, what duration of visa for students in this category? So, if it's beyond eighteen months, if it's be, if your 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 if your if your course is eighteen months to two years, your you, they will give you enough time for you to um, read your course with even extra months beyond your course end date. So that's not the problem. If your course is going to take four years, they will give you four years or even five years or four and a half years. If it's going to take two years, they'll give you two years, six months. If it's going to take one year, they'll give you one year, six months. So that's going to be on your BRP card. You can't collect when you get to the US. <laughs> when you get to the UK, sorry. It's stated student copy on the transcript and it is conditional offer and they didn't ask for the official copy. So if it's a condition, is it unconditional or conditional? If it's a conditional offer, it means they're asking for further further um further document so if it's a condition so that you need to meet the condition so maybe you should retype this and send it so it's you said it's a conditional offer and they didn't ask for the official copy i don't know so maybe you retype it so let me know if it's an unconditional offer please and then probably maybe let me know the school does bsc class start for september too? yes if you want to go for bsc you want to go for masters they all start they all have the same intake how much is student visa fee so student visa fee is also fluctuates like the ihs um so it's anywhere around 480 something 490 something 501 502 so it depends on the exchange rates so this this this, this rate is converted mm -hmm. from pounds to dollars because you're actually paying dollars so whatever mm -hmm. rate is is it's going that day at that time that's what you get but the lowest you definitely get to pay is around maybe 470 something, right? The highest should be 540 something, right? So it should be just put a, put an eye out for like 480 to 490 dollars. That's student visa fee for each applicant. So if you're five, all of you pay that five times. Hello, I'm just joining. We plainly are exploring your services for admission into postgraduate studies. Please, may you share some light on the restrictions being circulated with regard which reg which reg i don't understand it. maybe you can complete the question before it's time for me to to go we just start from restrictions what restrictions just tell me what restrictions are then i can actually um i can actually um attend to that my transcript said a student copy on it and my offer was a conditional offer the offer didn't state or mention anything about the official family but i'm just asking us to avoid rush so if it's a conditional offer, I'm sure you have missed out where the conditions, the condition you need to meet are. So you need to contact the school because they're giving you a conditional offer. You can't use that. What the school is telling you is that we like you. We feel you are qualified for this course, but get your documentation right and we will give you a, mm -hmm. a non-conditional offer. So if it's a conditional offer and they're not telling you what conditions you need to meet, then contact the school and let them tell you so that you can convert it to an unconditional offer because that's the only way you can go ahead with the admission processing you can also contact us and we can help you through this process as well okay so it's a conditional offer they only asked 
that I pay tuition deposits and I, I and then I get interview after that. Okay. If that's if that's the case then you, you are, well you are one of the lucky ones that use the student copy to get um, an offer. Uh, so that's fine. If they're gonna give you that that's fine. But usually they would request for a an official transcript. They don't work with students because students can actually you know tamper with the with the transcript and all that. But if they are gonna work with it lucky you then are there fully funded schools in the uk fully funded no are there scholarships that can fully fund you probably yes so but you need to apply to the scholarships also some of these scholarships might not be handled by the school it might be an organization it might be a government it might be a body so most times you already have to have an offer you apply for it and then they fund you but you will not get a fully funded school you can get a partially funded. There are schools that will give you up to 50%, you know, scholarship or even more. But usually you have to pay something. And like I said earlier, it's usually um, for STEM subjects. That's um, science, tech, engineering and mathematics, you know, courses, right? Maybe a few in creative arts, you know, um, because those are like, like very hands-on and all that. But usually it's STEM okay so i do not see any more questions i still have about seven minutes if anyone has questions this is the time to ask because when i go off here it's still next week and i might not be the one you know you're seeing next week so if you have questions that i have the capacity to answer please 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 go ahead and ask Go ahead and ask. You're very welcome, Landness Realty. You're very much welcome, and I wish you success in your application process, in your interview. I hope you blast, blast them away. Um, so, Oyinka, I would like if you should re resubmit your question. I want to know what restrictions being circulated, which rig, which rig. I'm sure you wanted to say which regards. So if you can maybe complete this question so that I can answer it, I think the question seems, it looks interesting. So I, would, I want to know what exactly you're talking about. Is it late to start MSA application for September? No, this is the early period. Well, some schools are already filling out for some courses. So some of the key courses in some schools, especially schools that have, you know, um, um, affordable tuition. So one of our schools that we work with is University of Hall. And as you guys know, it's one of the most affordable tuition, where you have tuition less than ten thousand pounds. So most tuition are around nine thousand um, seven hundred and fifty thereabouts for the tuition fee. And I am start to tell you that most of the courses in University of All are already closed for September. You cannot apply most of the courses because of the tuition fee. People feel like it's affordable and they want to go for it. So, but if you're looking at other universities, there is abundance of universities, abundance of courses that you can actually apply for. However, some, even in all universities, can actually be closed. Like, so courses like um, Social Works, it's a very, very lucrative course in the UK and a lot of people want it. So, it, it, it closes out very fast in most schools. You know, so you have to apply way, 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 way before time. But aside that, you are still early. This is just February. September, you're still very early. So people even apply in June and still get offers and still go. Right. So this is still an early period for most courses. You might not get some of the cheapest schools because those ones are filled out fast, but you get most of the average schools. So why next it takes long to seek admission for their students? Well, it depends on the school you're going to. So what happens is if you come and you we pick schools along with you, you decide to say what the school you want to go for and these are the things you want to do. And now I will make the application on your behalf. We also have to wait for the school to give you the admission. We don't directly influence their decision. What we can do is track the process for you because we have a direct relationship and we have our own agency portal. So where you make your application is different from where we make our application. So they would attend to our applications in most cases faster than they attend to people who submit on their own. And when these people have issues, questions or whatever, you know, and they have to go through, you know, 
um, long processes to contact the university, you can always go through us because we have direct contact. So, but in terms of getting the admission, we do not have any direct influence on that. We can only fast track the process where possible. So it depends on if you are currently with us and we are helping you to get admission, it now depends on the schools. Some schools take a while, some schools take two days, some schools take one week, some schools will take two months. Do you get? So those are things that really are beyond our control. If next it was a school, we will give you the admission by ourselves because obviously we want to help. I was asking about restrictions being circulated as per study visas. What restrictions? There are no restrictions about study visas. I don't understand. There are no restrictions on study visas. Um, maybe there are just more regulations in terms of verifying people's documents because what we saw in January was not the experience last year and last two years. When you submit documents, you just go ahead and give you your visa. But now they are requesting for more documents, your employment records. If you've had issues with them before, they, are, they will send you um, messages to you know, you know, send documents to verify, you know, they're asking for backdated bank statement, things like that. So I think it's due to the fact that a lot of people um, go to the UK and they cannot meet up with the, um, the, the how would I put it, monetary obligations. So if you don't plan very well before you go, you might go there and get overwhelmed. The bills don't wait. As you're landing, the bills are already compiling, are accumulating. So when people go there and they don't plan very well, it might affect their payment to the school. And the school obviously will report, you know, to the home office. And now they are seeing a lot of people who, who claim they have this money because you have to show your bank statements now saying you have the money. And then you're getting to the school, you can't pay your school fee. So where did that money come from? Do you get? So that's why there are now more questions, you know, and then they are seeing certain people with certain courses. So for instance, you read um maybe um uh, geography and then you're going for something in health or you're going for a business course or something you know before they will not ask now they will say bring your employment records because i want to see what does how does what you read correlate with what you want to go and do now so your employment records that might be what you help them fill the gap so maybe you read geography but you've been working in a hospital even if it's in the admin part you have been exposed to the world of health and right now you're feeling like this is a change of career is something that you want and you want a professional certification that can launch you into that world do you get so they just need to use it to answer questions they want to see the gaps they want to say okay what has this person been doing is this person a bum because they don't want any help person they don't want someone that has finished 10 years ago you have not worked for 10 years and all of a sudden you're coming to the uk do you get they want the bright minds the the, the um skilled minds you know the creative minds because they know that most of these people going will not come back most of you going at least this period will not come back you definitely get jobs that will sponsor your skilled worker visa or any type of visa that can see you being in the uk maybe permanently do you get so they want to be sure that the people the crop of people that are getting into their country are the best so that's why there are now more questions you know compared to before right but there are no restrictions on visa per se I've submit all my documents no reply yet please uh, lo open me places um maybe you should request for me rose just whoever it is you're you're talking with, just request for rose let me find out exactly why um you haven't gotten any response so i'm really sorry about that probably i do not know i wouldn't be able to say until i know your full name and check our serum to see what stage you're on now um so please ask for rose and then i would i'll be able to help you track it what are the best ways to prepare for cast interview what are the questions we want to prepare for so for our students really we do a precast interview with you right well, yeah a precast precast interview because the interview is basically called a precast interview now we do a pre precast interview with you um because we've had you know a lot of people that have gone through this interview so we know how it goes especially for schools that we work with on the regular so majorly the questions will bother around your motivation why you want to go for this course why you want to go to the uk why you want to go to this particular school what should be your history what you're doing what you studied 
you know your work experience what you've been working so far then why you want to go for this course what you see yourself doing what are the opportunities back in nigeria because they expect that you're coming back to nigeria so you need to tell them okay these are the opportunities in nigeria that i am foreseeing that is making me want to go and study in the uk do you get obviously you need to let them know that you want to come back this is not an avenue for you to go and stay back even if that's what you have in mind yeah but you need to let them know that okay the idea is to go get the skills get this knowledge and come back to nigeria so that's basically how the questioning goes it's not any one particular question so where a lot of people used to usually maybe get you wrong then they not ask you about any previous visa refusals you know previous applications you've had previous schools that refused you things like that they just want to know you right so where a lot of people get issues with their PCAS interview is when they want to defend their motivation for the course or what to bring them back to Nigeria, you know, or their work history, how it relates to what they want to do if there's a difference between what you studied before, what you want to study now. So, you know, when you don't know how to merge and marry everything together, you might, you might have like a disjointed interview. So what we do is you, you come into the office or sometimes we, we hold Skype or Zoom interviews with you where we take you through the process give you all the questions likely questions that can come out and then you know prep you for the interview so that's what that's how we do it the university of all accept hnd no please the university of all does not accept hnd i submitted my documents to next for admission but no reply yet please like i said please help me um request for me look when me rose and i'll respond directly i'll check directly for you I will be the one to study and I'm getting married by June. We we'll would like to travel with my wife. I hope when I'm filing an application for marital status as soon. No, 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 it won't affect you. If even if admission you say single, as at the time for visa, it doesn't affect you. You can go with your wife. Is the bank statement for visa till 28 days? Yes, bank statement for visa is also 28 days. I asked question in a but I missed the reply then. I hope previous status won't affect me. What previous status? Okay, we're ending this now. This is gonna be the last question. What previous status won't affect you? I don't know what that means. Is it previous status for your marriage? Let me go. Okay, yo. so previous status, if you're filling your admissions form and you were married and you think that you were single and then when you're filling your visa, you're married, it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect, no, no, it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect at all. So all you need to do is just update and that's fine and then include your wife doesn't affect do i need to pay for cars like i said you don't pay for cars but you need to pay for your tuition deposit so once you made a deposit to school you can now go and um, get your cars now this is a payment towards your tuition so cars is free so you're just paying your school fees you're just ensuring that you will definitely come because cash your cars is confirmation of acceptance of study it means that you have confirmed you want to come and study so for, for you to show you're serious you need to pay part of your tuition fee can you do a pre class preparation interview for me? Um, if you are a student, maybe contact ask for Rose, please, and contact us. We actually do pre class interviews, so yes, please just ask for Rose. Um, no reply on WhatsApp. Who did you who did you um send a DM or let me just put my number here? Can you note it down? Are you prepared? Or oh, I think I should just add a comment. Um, zero eight one. Sixty thirty one four nine four rose. So I just added my comment to my number to the to the comment. I'm going to leave this live on for the next one to two minutes so that you can actually copy the number because once I end this, I don't think you'll be able to have access to that number again. So send me a WhatsApp message and I'll help you with your full name and I'll be able to help you um, and find out what, why your application is taking long. And for Landness Realty too, you can also contact me about your cast interview and then we'll see what we can do about that. I think I have answered all mm -hmm. questions. I'm just going to leave it for like a minute so that people that want to um, copy my number, please, please copy it on time. So my number is 081-6030-1494. 081-6030-1494. My name is Rose. 
Rose Lynn, but you can call me Rose for short. Just call me Rose for short. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm five minutes past the time. Thank you so much for joining. Like I said, if you have questions, leave it in the comments or send me a message uh, or send a DM. You will be attended to. So thank you for coming. God bless you all. Bye.